Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Heretics and Heroes. Are you thinking of upgrading from cheap synthetic brushes to a nice sable hairbrush? Or maybe you already have one, but you're worried that you might destroy it? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered with this guide. But first, we have to talk about the difference between a natural hairbrush and a synthetic brush. On screen, I have on the right a Kalinsky Sable Windsor & Newton Series 7. And on the left, I have a cheap synthetic brush. At first glance, they look very similar, but if we zoom in on the hairs, you'll see that there's a very significant difference. First up, on the Kalinsky Sable brush, you'll see that the brush head has a wonderful almond shape to it, coming to a near perfect point. This shape is what makes sable hair brushes so special, and it's what we're trying to preserve through our brush care. Now let's take a look at the synthetic brush. You'll notice it doesn't have the same body to it, sometimes called a reservoir, and it has a curved point. This isn't the result of abuse or neglect. This is just what happens to synthetic brushes. If you have a synthetic brush and the tip has gone curvy, you didn't do anything wrong. This is unavoidable. But this doesn't mean your brush is useless. Old synthetic brushes are great for applying washes, stippling, or using that curved tip to get into hard to reach places. But for fine details and work that requires a bit more finesse and control, nothing beats a sable hair brush. Now, sable hair brushes are much more expensive than synthetic ones, but if you take care of them, they can last for years. And I've already made the mistakes, so you don't have to. Let's take a look at my first sable hair brush and what became of it. On the left here, we have a Raphael 8404. This is a very nice brush used by a lot of pros. And it's on the expensive side as far as these brushes go. So naturally, I wanted to preserve it. And I went about this by aggressively cleaning it. Way too aggressively. Within a short time, I had destroyed the brush. Look closely at what happens to the tip here. Yes, it is still sharp, but there is no more of that belly to hold paint anymore. And the reason for this is I cleaned this brush so aggressively that I actually ripped out and broke a lot of the hairs on the outside. Compare that to my current Windsor Newton brush, which I've had for much, much longer and is in near pristine shape. That is all down to learning a few lessons about brush care. So let's get to the first and probably most important brush care tip. You need to keep your brush clean throughout all stages of the painting process. For this, we will be using our trusty water cup. Now I have a fancy one with the brush holders and the ribbing at the bottom to clean the brush, but this is totally unnecessary. You can just use any old cup. In fact, the brush cleaner at the bottom of this cup is a trap. That's how I destroyed my first brush. The real tip that I have for you here is that in order to keep your brush clean, you have to keep your cup and your cleaning water clean as well. My cup has seen some use. The water's dirty. The cup itself is dirty. It's time to wash it out. At a bare minimum, you want to be using fresh water for every painting session. Ideally, you might even change it out two or three times during a painting session. And while you don't need to scrub your cup every single time you use it, once you've started getting some buildup on the bottom or around the sides, it's time to hit it with a sponge. So now we have our clean water. How do we clean our brush? Really the best way to do it is just vigorously shake it in the water until all of the paint is gone. What you don't wanna do is go overly aggressive on the cleaning surface at the bottom of the cup, like in this clip. If your cup has this cleaning surface and you want to use it, just make sure to be gentle with it. You'll know you've thoroughly cleaned your brush if when you pull it out of the water, there's no visible paint left and the brush returns to its original shape. Let's move on to our second brush care tip. In addition to keeping your brush clean by cleaning it, you can also make sure your brush never gets too dirty in the first place. Loading a sable hair brush correctly is very important. You mainly want to be using this kind of a brush for fine detail work on your miniatures. So you don't want to be using it to scoop paint out of your pots 
or do any really rough mixing in the palette. You should generally avoid using it for washes. That's what your synthetic brushes are for. And crucially, when you're taking paint from the palette, you don't want to be overloading the brush. The reason for this is you don't want paint to get into the ferrule of the brush. The ferrule is the metal band around the neck of the brush that keeps the brush hairs in place and helps them maintain their shape. Here is an example of a brush that is properly loaded. You're looking for the paint to go somewhere between halfway to three quarters of the way up the brush. Enough so that it gets in the belly and you have a reservoir of paint, but not so far that it's gonna start creeping into the ferrule. Here we have an example of an overloaded brush. You can see that the whole thing is totally saturated and you've got paint going all the way up into the ferrule. If you are not able to properly clean that out and that paint hardens in there, it might make it impossible for your brush to form a tip anymore. Speaking of paint drying, let me show you a worst case scenario. Now I know what you're thinking. Why is having an adorable fluffy dog to pet a worst case scenario? Let's rewind. I put a paintbrush filled with paint down on the table without washing it. If that paint dries in the brush, game over. That is my third tip. Always be washing your brush. Need to go get a snack? Wash your brush. A friend stops by to say hello? Wash your brush. Been painting for more than a minute or two? Wash your brush. Glanced at paint out of the corner of your eye? Wash your damn brush. All right, maybe not that last one. The point being, you always want your brush to be clean and to have fresh paint on it. And this isn't just brush care, that'll improve your painting too. And don't worry about wasting paint, it's really a minuscule amount. And if you're using a wet palette like you really should be, you'll be saving tons of paint in other ways. On to the next tip. I've already talked about the importance of maintaining the point on your brush. There are steps that you can take during your painting process that can help with this. In a sense, you can sharpen your paintbrush. When loading your brush, you should place the tip in at a low angle and simultaneously twist and drag like shown in the video. This will help not only maintain the shape of the brush, but also help prevent you from overloading it. We'll repeat this motion during other steps, such as taking the brush out of the water pot and drying the brush once it's been cleaned. Once you have cleaned and dried your brush, if you're finished using it, you should immediately move to store it. And proper storage is our next tip. The best way to store a paintbrush is hanging it upside down so that any water and any residual paint that you were not able to wash out drips downward and not into the ferrule. I have paintbrush holders built into my cup that allows me to hang dry them, but I also have paintbrush holders built into this paint stand here. Intuitively, one would probably try and stand them upright in this, but if you place them in upside down, they will hang above the desk. If your paintbrush holder does not allow them to hang, what you can do is you can place the tip protector that came with the paintbrush over it, and that way it'll be able to stand brush side down, supported by the tip protector, and so it won't damage your brush. And for our final piece of maintenance advice, we have brush soap. The prevailing wisdom is that you should use brush soap after every painting session. However, in my opinion, I don't think that this is necessary as long as you are diligent about washing your brush throughout the painting process. The standard brush soap to use is this The Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. It costs about $8 and it'll last you a long time. There are instructions for use on the back, but it is overall very simple. 
All you need to do is wet your brush with warm water and work it into the soap. Don't be afraid to really work up a lather here. The only thing you wanna avoid is directly pressing the tip into it. And you'll probably want to repeat the lather and rinse sequence three or four times. I tend to soap my brush like this once every couple of days, maybe once a week at the longest. Let's take a look at it now that it's all clean. I've had this brush now for at least six months and it gets frequent use. But as you can see, since it's been well cared for, it's showing no signs of slowing down. It basically looks brand new. And that's it for today's video, everyone. I hope that this will allow you to use your sable hair brushes with confidence. And as always, if you found this entertaining or helpful, please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you on the tabletop.